Street photography can be tough. It can make you feel insecure, it can be intimidating, and it can make you want to give up photography altogether. But it can also be extremely rewarding. It's highly accessible and it gives you a fresh perspective into the world, seeing the extraordinary in the ordinary. This is something that I would advise most photographers, whether you're a beginner or professional, to try, to dabble in, to once in a while go out into the field and take photos in real life. In your failures, you are gonna learn, because street photography is a practice where you have to take a lot of bad photos before you get some good ones in there. Well, I do anyway. So in this video, I wanna give you five tips to help you enter the world of street photography. And this might help you whether you're a professional, but it is mainly aimed at beginners who possibly have some anxieties about starting street photography and have maybe tried it a couple of times, but are looking for some tips to grow into this art form and see if they can explore it more. And stick around because tip number five is definitely my favorite and it's something I've learned recently. That one's good. So tip number one, Use a wrist strap. This is a game changer when it comes to street photography. Now you might have heard this in other videos where other street photographers have talked about this, but I'm gonna reiterate it because it is essential. And there are a couple of reasons why I think you should have a wrist strap. The first being you don't really want it around your neck or around your body because it stops you from having your camera close to your face and ready to take the shot. Street photography is happening all around you and it's all about capturing those moments in that split second. With a wrist strap, it's always in your hand, you're ready and you're good to go. The other reason is that if you didn't have a strap at all, you could drop it, you could have it pinched. Yeah, so it's essential to have a strap, but I think the wrist strap is the way to go with street photography. Okay, tip number two is keep it simple. Don't be going out with all of your photography gear. You just need to get yourself a nice little setup, something discreet. Remember, street photography is about being discreet, a fly on the wall, grabbing photos as and when they come. And the best way to do that, I think, in my personal opinion, is to have a simple setup. Now, I use the X-Pro Free, which I've talked about in previous videos, but this works perfectly for me. I've owned the X100F, and that whole X100 series is perfect. On this channel, I mean, I generally use and talk about Fujifilm gear, but there are many other very good small compact cameras that do the job. Uh, even film photography, another perfect way to go around cities and certain neighborhoods and streets to take photos. I love using the 35mm f2, also a good pancake lens. I love how you can interchange lenses with the X-Pro3, so this is a perfect setup for me. The X100 series is fantastic too for street photography. Keeping it small, keeping it condensed, don't make it too complicated. You don't want to be going around with a telephoto zoom lens and shoving it in people's faces. That really isn't going to make you many friends and you might run into some trouble. It's also just carrying around that weight. Some street photography can take hours sometimes. I've been out all day and the last thing I want to be doing is carrying around all my gear, all these lenses, keep it simple, stick to a focal length and shoot till you're tired. I think it's a real good training ground to practice and hone your skills when you keep it simple. The third tip I'd like to share with you is wear sunglasses. Now I have had a few people raise their eyebrows at me with this one, but it really does help and it has helped me because your eyes, as they say, give you away. Now with street photography, most people are trying to capture people and they're trying to capture scenes and they're trying to again look less stalkerish so i know that sunglasses can maybe do that if your eyes are dotting all over the place and you make eye contact with someone who you're trying to photograph it can make you feel either very intimidated very anxious it can inhibit you from taking the photo if you are wearing sunglasses such as i am now you can i am looking to the right and i don't think that you'd be able to tell I'm looking to the left now. So it kind of gives you a perspective where you can scout the street and see if there is something where there's potential for a good photograph. So, sunglasses. I know it's a weird one, but it has helped me. Obviously, I wouldn't wear these at night because that would also look quite odd. But 
when it comes to daytime shooting and if there's bright sunlight, you know, most people probably will have sunglasses on anyway, and it might be an obvious one. And I've made eye contact with other street photographers and it can be a bit odd. So <laughs> I always laugh because obviously I know what they're up to because I'm a street photographer myself, but sunglasses, maybe a good tip, maybe not. The fourth tip I'd like to give you is shoot a scene. And what I mean by that is set up your composition. If you'd like a little bit of light hitting a building and someone is walking past, but you miss them the first time, just stay there, wait, camp out, wait for maybe another person to walk by. Don't be in too much of a hurry to walk around and go to the next place and the next place and the next place. Find a spot you like, sit there for 10 to 20 minutes, maybe longer, depends on how patient you are, and wait for that scene to develop and let it come to you. And we see these people online dashing around the streets, grabbing all these great photos, and that's a misconception. You know, obviously everything that's put on online is not the true self, because we want to be coming across credible and, you know, all of that. So when it comes to this, I think take your time, find your scenes, create the composition, and then take the photo. You'll find that you'll start making better photos instantly when you wait for the photograph to present itself. Okay, so the fifth and last, and definitely a bit of a game changer for me, was making sure my camera gear is theft proof. I've got a Canon, which I think in America, this would be called a Rebel, but over here in Europe, it is called an EOS 200D. Now, this is not an entirely very expensive camera, but in its day when I bought it, it was for me and I was just starting out. I, I would love to quote and point you to <laughs> where I got this tip from, but I can't remember, but I wanna share it with you because it's fantastic and I've done it ever since. So if you have anything that is of value. So I have my Fujifilm X-H2S and sometimes I'll go out on the street and use that with a smaller lens, keeping it compact. I will place over some black tape. I'll just cover up the branding because it takes away another level of anxiety if people may notice my camera. It just becomes a little bit more theft proof. If they know how much a Fujifilm X-H2S or a Sony Alpha or a Canon R6 costs, someone would pinch it. So it's good to cover up your branding when doing street photography. I think it just, again, it's this is more, you know, someone like myself who worries about this kind of stuff. It just takes away a level of anxiety that makes me focus more on photography. Okay, so that about wraps it up for this video. If you have any street photography tips of your own, drop them in the comments below. I want to know them and test them out. I'm sure they're probably just as good or if not better than mine. But I do hope you found some value in this video and test them out. Let me know if any of these helped. You'll do me a big favor by liking and subscribing. I really appreciate it. Keep making waves. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.